Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Rad One Radio. I'm your host, Rob Anthony Dyer. And today with me, I am very glad to have a two-time Emmy Award winning hairstylist to the stars, Kaya Wright. Not only that, but she has her own show on the Oprah Winfrey Network, which is following her and her friends and their adventures in New York City. So think of Sex in the City, but with real people. And how's it going, Kaya? <laughs> it's, it's really good. It's really, really good. Good times right now. That's great. Now, I'm not usually a fan of reality shows, but when somebody actually has talent like yourself, that's a totally different story. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, the, the, good, the good thing is, one of the things that we have been really trying to get the media to understand, too, is that it's a docu-series, and well, where we feel it's a little different is because it really is um, these... We're really having our lives documented daily. Like they, you know, this this is our real lives. We're really friends over from anywhere from 16 to 18 years. We've been friends, you know. Just, you know, we're real. These are real friendships, and it's about four women who two are life after breast cancer. It's about women turning 40. It's about women in fashion, trendsetters, um, dating younger men, surrogacy. Can't you know? Wow. One of the, one, one, my best friend should know she can't have children, you know, so, you know, and it having a possible effect on her, on her relationship, on her marriage. So it's a lot. And I, I feel like women are going to be able to see themselves, young women, older women, you know, mothers, sisters, you're going to see yourselves in us. You know, each and every one of us has an interesting story that I think someone can relate to. A lot of the fictional series will tackle those issues, but sometimes it can be a bit contrite wrapping it up in an hour. So these are real people. Yeah. Now, yeah. it's funny that you should mention that about women. I was actually just talking to one of my good friends who's an actress and singer, and she was saying how, especially in Hollywood, it's so rare for women to be friends and support each other. They tend to be all cutthroat. You know, like competitive. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it's, I don't think it's always intentional. I feel like, you know, I've always been behind the scenes. So I, I've, I've been looking through the lens very differently. But to now be in front of the camera, it's kind of like I, I've been in class. Hmm. I've been in practice. I understand what it is. I know that there's one role and there's, there's 13 black actresses that have to go for that one role. So I can see where it's sort of been embedded when it comes to the entertainment industry. That's just the entertainment industry. Now we can we can separate that again when we start to talk about racism and mm. you know you know the light skinned people on the inside and dark skinned people. You know what I mean? It's just it's just so embedded in us and and, and and it's so competitive with the men and you know it's just so much. And one of the great things that I'm I'm, I'm really proud of too is that we're all very strong A type personality women. You know, all very entrepreneurial. We can all, you know, walk into the room and, and stand alone with the set, with, with with great energy and you know and um, and everything, and still be able to exist together. And that I find is very very rare. We've made a conscious effort to, you know, we don't always get along. I'm not saying like we're a peachy king all the time, right. but now we're having we know that we're being you know we're, it's through a microscope now we're being looked at totally different so we know we have to really work at it it's no okay you know or somebody make you mad i can just not talk to you for like a week or two now we actually have to get through it right we have to put all of those differences aside and understand what the goal is when you and, and a lot of these reality shows you know they got these bad raps because they had to start to cut and paste stories together oh, yeah. and, piece and pick these women that weren't really friends and place them into a room and, 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 and make and create story around them. So naturally what you're going to get, you're going to get some fighting and all of that because there's going to be conflict with women who don't even know each other. Right. And what is the goal? There is no goal. And then you just throw them together and then let the room just, and let the story start to unfold. And our story, this was, we got enough drama in our lives. Mm-hmm. You know, going through, we, we're turning 40 and, you know, my best friend can't have children. Mm-hmm. And that's affecting her marriage. You know, I have another friend who, you know, um, just got a double mastectomy. Ooh. You know, that's enough drama. Like, we don't, we don't need to add another layer of us girlfriends fighting and beating each other up. Like, <laughs> life is just different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you well, turn to 40, what, man. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, I read that in your bio that there, you know, there's going to be no cat fighting and all that. And I was really glad to see that because... 
There's too many. Yeah. Problems. Well, they, they'll take, yeah. you know, anything with editing. You can, if you have enough footage of people and you just decide, okay, we're going to make this woman the bitch. So you just take every moment where she's in a bad mood yeah. and clip it together. Exactly. You know. Or you provoke her. You provoke her right. to be a bitch. And, and, and it's interesting. And in, in our, um, when we were filming the show, it really was, I have to just continue to just stay on that documentary side because we, they weren't, they weren't trying to create story. You know what I mean? Like the story just always unfolded. Like the story was always there. It, every day it was just there. It wasn't like they had to create any craziness. You know what I mean? It just, and OWN didn't want it. That's not what Oprah Network is. So we felt right at home. You know, like, wow, we get to be with Oprah Winfrey, this credible, inspirational, you know, it's a, it's a smaller network, which makes it a little bit challenging. But because, you know, this is the real test. Do you really want to be on TV to be a star or do you want to be on TV to share your story? Right. And that's, and that would, that's what it's always been about for me. I'm not here to, I'm not trying to be, you know, I didn't, I didn't go to school. I didn't take drama class. I wasn't trying to be an actress. I just was a celebrity hairstylist that it evolved into more. So for me, this is an awesome opportunity and it's an awesome opportunity to be able to be with my friends, you know? That's a great point because I think Oprah Winfrey obviously is somebody with integrity and who doesn't love Oprah? And, and with her network, it, it seems like she puts on shows that she likes. She really cares about the content, I think. Yeah, I mean, she does. I mean, but if the I, show doesn't do well, we won't be on air. So we need everybody to watch Love in the City 10 p.m. on Saturday night because it really doesn't matter. Everybody's saying, oh, you know, I, I don't want to see any more ratchet fighting. But then when you get the opposite of that, you 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 you, you soon see who really who supports what, you know. But it's so much television on right now, you know. Yeah, it's just true. really hard. You know, it's really hard to even find them shows if it's not promoted to death. Oh, now, I have a question. Now, you've done hairstyling for some of the most beautiful women in Hollywood. I mean, Tyra Banks. Yeah. Is it Heidi Klum? Yeah. Yeah, Tyra Banks. Um, I put a weave in Heidi's hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kerry yeah. Washington. Kerry Washington. I love her. Gabrielle Union, Sierra, um, Tyra, Jennifer Hudson. I've done with. I've done a lot of a lot of Black Hollywood. You know, lots of them. So. But it also, I've also read that you do hair for people of all all different ethnicities. Yeah, I actually work, and outside of me, you know, in my celebrity world, I really do love the salon because I love the everyday woman. You know, that's that's always been my safe place. You know, whenever because the celebrity world, you you have your ups, you have your downs. You know, you hope to always be busy, and you know sometimes you're not. And when you freelance, you just always want to make sure that you just spread your ducats all over the place. And the salon is just a place that one I love, and then you know that's the place I always go back to. You know, my celebrity world is slow. You know, you go back to you know your consistent clientele mm-hmm. who who know me forever, and I work at the Warren Tracomi franchise in L.A. And I bet it helps keep you a bit grounded because I know people always tend to open up to their hairdressers. <laughs> yeah, they do. They really do. Your hairstylist is like your confidant. Oh yeah. That's how uh, that's how me and my friends met because. You know, I was I was doing like their hair, and then we ended up becoming friends. And you, because you meet so many amazing women just by styling your hair, you know. And some, you, I mean, I can't be everybody's friends. I won't make any money, but mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how we became friends. A few of us. My model is change your hair, change your life. Exactly. It really, really is true. I mean, yeah. change your hair, your life. Will change. Sometimes you need a change, and you just by looking in the mirror, it's a symbolic change, and. um so now you you're also um, you work with Clairol. I'm a Clairol professional ambassador, yes. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been with them now for like three years, and it's interesting because you know I started out. I've always been a Clairol user, so that was like the household color product that everybody used. Most stylists, especially black stylists, that was the easiest friendliest hair color to use and now I'm like the ambassador for them that's another like one of my sort of dream come true you know what I mean like oh now I'm an ambassador for a product that I've used all my life mm. that's crazy what tips would you have for people they want to color their hair at home or do you tell them to go to professional you know I I would say that some colors you can do yourself at home. If you're doing anything over a level 8, mm-hmm. you can do it at home. But if you're doing any anything under a level 8, you can do it at home. But anything over a level 8, mm-hmm. 
you definitely should consult with a stylist, especially if you're moving into like color corrections mm-hmm. or if you're really not sure what tone or what shade, because you can get up to a level A, but then you can go a little bit too warm, too orange. Mm-hmm. What is your, if you're more Latin you or black, you have more uh, uh, darker tones in your hair. It, it has, it's going to pull up orange and red because mm-hmm. the pigment is so dark. It's going to go into the warmer families if you want to pull it up and, and go ashier. Right. So you just want to make sure you consult with your stylist. The things that I like to do at home are things when you're going up maybe four levels, you know, or you're putting a semi-permanent in, or you're doing a rent, or you're covering up some gray. Mm-hmm. Those are the things you can do at home. But anything too elaborate, like highlights, oh, highlights yeah. are really hard to do. Yeah. If you're doing like a piece in the front, then yes, or a panel, mm-hmm. you're taking like a panel underneath. That's fine, but when you want to really get into some real art, I think you should go to the floor. Now, when you've worked on Kerry Washington's hair, was that for um, the show, or is that for no? Some no, I haven't done TV television in a long time. Like I, one of the things when I when I left with Tyra, I really, you know, when you're an artist, a real artist, it's very hard to be confined to one. Hmm face, one thing, one tone, one note all the time, 10 hours a day. <laughs> like it's a lot. It's a lot for a real artist. And I did it for six years. Wow. That and once I won, yeah, once you win two Emmys, what else are you doing it for? Right. You know, if I was older with children and I was looking for benefits and health, then it would be different. But that's not my, my path is not television. I'm not looking for a settled you know, that's when you settle down more. I feel like television is a, is a, a lot more of a settled down lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And that's not really my lifestyle. So doing the television, I, I would have loved to go and do Scandal and be a part of that. But at the same time, the, the artist side of me, that's just not where I want to spend the next chapter of my life like doing um a lot of like you know, behind the scenes television hair. Right. You, know? you like variety. That would probably be. I love not, yeah, I love it. I did it. I did it already. I did it with Tyra for two years when she first got the talk show on Top Model. That's amazing. But, so you stuck with it for both. Oh, yeah. I was with her for everything. Everything Tyra was Kaya Wright. <laughs> wow. Wow. And, um, yeah. So when, you, when you're doing that every single day, day in and day out, you just have to. You know, I, I think I got enough of it. You know, I got enough. She and Tyra was one of the most amazing artists I've ever worked with in my life. You know, I learned a lot. You know, she's super professional. She's super awesome to work with. And, um, you know, it was a great experience, but it's not something that I want to do uh you know, long term. Yeah, I was very impressed with Tyra going from being a supermodel to then taking her talk show and then America's Top Model to such a huge, successful level. She's obviously an extremely smart businesswoman. Yeah, she really is. Have you met Oprah? Have you worked with her directly? Discussing the, your new show? I have met Oprah. I've met her. I have not met her as love, with Love and City, but I've met her just from working with Jennifer Hudson. You know, a lot of times Jennifer speaks, there's a lot of um, a singing engagements, and Oprah has been at like a few. Mm-hmm. And I've met her that way. You know, so I have met her. I'm sure what you saw me on her show on the commercial. She was like, oh, I've met that face before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it a bit surreal? I mean, there. I've met a lot of celebrities and I talk to you know, a lot of people on the show. And usually it doesn't phase me but because um, I grew up next door to a famous rock musician. So I'm kind of used to it. But I think if I were to meet someone like Oprah, I might be a little kind of stunned for a minute because she's Oprah. <laughs> yeah, you you are. Like I'm like, when I, when I meet her... For love in the city, I, then I'm going to be, because it's about me. The highlight is on me now. You know what I mean? I'm just really glad to see touching that Jennifer has hair in an interview. And she's like, oh, who, 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 who does your hair? And I was like, she was like, she does. And I was like, hi, Oprah. You know, it's kind of, that's different <laughs> than now the interview is about me or the conversation is about, you know, the, her, her show on her network. Right. It's that's going to be a different interview. That might be a pass out moment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll do Oprah's hair, you know? Hmm. Oh man, that would be so great. I don't even have to do her hair. I don't want to even sure, right. you know what I mean? like she's been with she's been with her team for so long it just would be like, why? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I could imagine be that uh, being a little uh, making you a little nervous <laughs> doing Oprah's hair. Yeah, I was like <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, Oh no no no, it's okay. We just we can talk. <laughs> now I wonder though, you think you might see her show up for one of your days of the show when you're shooting just to check things out and see Wow, I wow, man, that would be a pleasure. I doubt that. <laughs> you never know. You never I know. doubt that. 
Well, you know, if all, all, she, all of her has to do is say she likes something like a book and it's an immediate bestseller, so. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think she should run for president, really. <laughs> you think so? I I think, yeah. You know what? I don't even want that for her. I no, know, like, I know. Running for president is like the hardest job in the world. Like, I feel bad for Obama. I would hate to be his wife. Oh, I totally. Like, oh my God. Can you imagine, like, my husband just got to wait up the entire world, and no matter what, it's never going to be right. Right. Exactly. And a black man. Like, yeah. come on. Oh, I was just saying that she's that popular that she could probably if she wanted to. But yeah, she could. She that, could. So that's just can you imagine the level of judgment uh, she would get a woman? And you mentioned earlier about the racism in Hollywood and stuff, how it's just kind of ingrained in people. Have you encountered that with getting jobs? You know what? I really, I really haven't. Not at all. Um, not at all in that way. I'm you, again, like I'm behind the scenes, so it's just about whether. You know, they like your work or not, you know, whether you're available and they like you. It's not about, like, I'm not up against, like, a thousand hairdressers, you know? Um, it's just not, it doesn't really work that way. Although now everybody wants to move to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm hoping to go. <laughs> yeah, like, everybody wants to come to L.A. at some point. And, and it is one of those places that, you know, either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. People mm-hmm. get weirdly surprised at how, you know, how um, how hard it is there. You know, how, and it's not even that it's hard, it's just, you know, it's a very um, interesting place to live. It really is. It's a competitive, it's interesting, it's, you know, it's expensive, it's, you know, it, and it's it's clicky. Mm, very, that's a good word, yeah. Now, how did you break into doing hairstyling for the stars? I got in the industry by when I met Puffy, just kind of hanging out at Howard, coming to the party, just kind of hanging out in that circle. And he, maybe like a year or two later, I was probably like 22, he was getting his record label, Bad Boy Records. And he was like, I want you to do my artist's hair. And that's how we, that's really how it started. I started doing his, his, um, his, uh, his artist's hair. And that's how we started our thing. I started doing Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, Little Kim, Total, like anybody he would send my way, I would do their hair. And then he was like, would you want to go on the road? And then I was like, okay. And then he gave me some tips and then he was like, you know what? Mind your business, do your hair, no hanging out. Don't be trying to do all that and do what you got to do. And that's what I did. And that ended up, you know, that's got me in the industry. So thank you to Puffy. Wow. That's a great story. <laughs> Diddy, Diddy. Yeah, yeah. Whatever his name is today, right? Yeah, Diddy. <laughs> that's very cool. It is true. I think if you meet somebody, it's, you know, a lot of it is talent and then there isn't a, the luck factor involved or who you know, but it doesn't matter who you know if you don't have the talent, I think. Ooh, yeah. You, you know, who you know is, is really good, but you definitely want to, um, you definitely want to um, just know the right people and be good and be able to back it up. If they bring you in, back it up and right. be professional. Exactly. Be professional is like the number one key. I think also to be, you know, if somebody helps you out and you know somebody just, it's, it's, it's for me anyway, it's important that you're a real friend and you're loyal. You're not just using them as a stepping stone. Yeah. And that's the thing. And in, 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 I think in, um, in New York, I mean, in LA too, like we said, it's, it's so oversaturated with talent that, and it's so little reality has really opened up the world for hmm. so many other types of projects. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. you know, at first actors were a little upset at reality because they're like, should we out here, you know, working hard and, you know, now their rates are being compromised, I'm sure, after reality yeah. hit, well, yeah. because it's so much, you know, te- television is, is struggling too, just like music. Oh, yeah. Music totally, got hit. Yeah. Television got hit as well. Yeah. And, well, it's because the know, reality shows are so much cheaper to produce. It's so much cheaper to produce. So everyone's getting hit, and we're moving into, like, the next chapter of of entertainment. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's going over there. It's, 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 now it's like European television. Like I used to watch these reality shows, Big Brother, I'm talking over like 10, 12 years ago. Awesome. When reality first, first started overseas. From England, right? Yeah. Like I would watch TV and I'm like, why are you just got the TV watching these people like this? <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> you know, and now, but it was cheaper. That's why a lot of the British actors come to America. Well, yeah. I, because, 
we don't glor they don't glorify they don't it's not as big they don't it's not as sensational over there like it is here right well I've, you know? a lot of the actors I interview you know are actors and they they do resent some of the reality shows where the people they have, do. where they have no talent they, you know like it's the girls fighting or the you know the just whatever like honey boo boo or the naked and afraid which I've never watched any of these I've just yeah, heard and, they're, and they're making tons of money exactly they're making tons of money and they can and, and they're actors and they've been out on the scene for so many years and 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 their and their money and checks are being compromised so I get it I understand but your show this sounds very different I think it's kind of a you know a twist and I like how it's called love in the city. Right, that was Oprah. She named it. It was called. It came out last year. Uh, it premiered last year, like Labor Day weekend, uh, right after that. Evan had not, and it, it actually it was called Crazy Sexy Life, and then she <laughs> changed it to Love in the City because there was another uh, brand that had that name, um, the woman with cancer that she had on her show, and um, she changed the name to Love in the City. This is Oprah's name. Well, I like it. I think it says a lot about the way you described it, where it's real friends. And if you've known people for 18 or 20 years, they're like family. You can fight, yeah. but you know that you'll always make up. And I have friends I've known that long, and, it, you know, they understand you better than anybody else. And, yeah, they do. They, they really do. They understand me. I'm the Boston child. <laughs> they understand me. <laughs> now, how far in advance do you um, shoot the episodes before they air? Well, we shot this back. We were we we shot from September to like December, January, mm-hmm. January, really, and um, we finished. Um, we finished after we wrapped in January. We get ready to pick up. So you're done. We're done right before the holidays in December, and then we get pick up in January. So it took about four or five months to film it, and now it's on the air, mm-hmm. and um, and now it's on. Well, that's great. You know, it takes you know, it takes probably like three or four months for it to come on and have to figure out which lot you're going to be in. You know, it's a bit of a process. Mm-hmm. That's true. Now it's been about two years since we shot it to air. Yeah, I've heard of projects to get off the ground. Now, what uh, currently, just so the listeners know, what night and what time it's on, just to make sure that everybody can either set their DVRs or sit and watch it. Yes. Well, guys, it's on, it's on OWN Network, 10 p.m. on Saturday night. Okay. Um, we are at the third episode, so make sure you tune in this Saturday. Right. Um, the yeah. other thing is, be sure if you DVR, it only, it, we only get the ratings if it's three days. Right. So you watch it. Yes. Three days. So please, if, if you DVR it, it's mm-hmm. not going to matter if you watch it after the three days. So they don't do the, the random Nielsen families anymore. They actually can tell from your DVR. Cause that, yeah. Yeah, because people have projects going in their DVR forever, and they well, never watch it. I, some, there are some shows I just can't I can't keep up with all, all the time every week because I get busy. But I right. do try to do that within three days, you know. And I do know yeah. that it's important. Now, is it also, let's say somebody wants to, if they miss the first two episodes, they want to catch up. Is it available online or on demand for them to see them? You can go to Oprah.com and you definitely can catch some um, snippets of what's to come. And okay. she has a lot of little five minute recaps and two minute, like what's coming on, little interludes, like things that are coming on next. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's up to watch the whole season yet, but I think it, I think it re-aired. Okay. Because people have told me that they've seen it again. Like, oh, I just saw your show. And I'm not sure if they DVR'd it or... It came on another night. Yeah, yeah a lot sure. of cable networks will do that. They'll, um, you know, they'll repeat the episodes on a weekend afternoon or something. So uh, mm-hmm. I would like to see it from the beginning. So I'll definitely look into that. Yeah, so you know how to follow it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, I'll, and I'll make sure when I watch on the DVR because I do everything on the DVR through within three you days. Do. So I'll give you the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, give me the ratings. Don't forget. Well, I look forward to seeing that. And it sounds like you know something that's a good change for. Like a docu, like a what did you call it? A, a docu, a docu series. Docu series. Yes, yes, docu yes series. that's I like that better yeah. than a reality show. But it sounds like it's yeah. actually really reality, <laughs> not somebody's. Yeah, it is. It really is. Cool. And well, thank you so much. Well, Kaya, thank you for spending this time with me, and I will um, post all your links on my site so people can check it out. And I wish you the best with the series, and I'm definitely going to be watching it. Thank you so much. All right, you have a great day. This is Round One Radio.